So my name is Ben Azulai. I was born in the United States, 1990, May 8th. I'm a Taurus, very solid sign. Our feet are on the ground. We know what we want in life. And we go out there and we get it. So my mother, we lived in Israel. And uh, before I was born, she came through Mexico to have me here so I could have an American passport. And when we arrived here and I was born, my mother didn't want to stick around because some of my family members were working with Pablo Escobar and she didn't want to have any part of it. So we went back to Israel and we came back here when I was three. At the age of three, I went here to kindergarten and it didn't really work out for us. My dad didn't know what he was going to do with his life. And obviously you're out of your elements. They wanted to go back to Israel, so we went back. One of the biggest reasons we went back was uh, some of my family members were kidnapped by Pablo Escobar. And one ended up getting murdered and the other one was released. There were two brothers. One brother was found that he was stealing from Pablo and told him that the Beverly Hills Police Department took some of the drugs and Pablo didn't believe it, so he checked into it. They had people that were working inside of the police station. And uh, when they found out, they came and they sprayed him. He was arriving home. They shot him many, many bullets to the point that there was no real body. I mean, it was all in pieces. And uh, my mother had to go and uh, she saw the car and the body, whatever was left from it. And uh, since my family, my immediate family had no part in these kind of things and we were completely not in that world, we decided to go back to Israel. And I lived there till I was 10. And when I was 10, we came back here. I spoke no English, I had no friends, I went from living in a place in Israel that was kind of like a forest and farmland to coming here and living in a two bedroom apartment with my parents, my sister and my brother. Back in Israel we had a large home, each kid had his own bedroom and when we moved here with whatever we had left from Israel, also you have to think about the fact that coming in here every dollar at the time was five shekel so we didn't come here with much money and uh, it was a struggle because i was in the same bedroom with my brother and we would fight all day it was a really hard time and for two years i didn't want to learn the language at the age of 12 i said you know what i'm going to start learning we're obviously going to stick here for a while and uh, that was pretty much it started learning the language in Israel, I had many animals. I had 19 dogs, I had snakes, I had lizards. In Israel, you could find chameleons. You don't have them over here. But I was just that animal kid. And when I came here living in an apartment, uh, that life of mine was gone. So it was very hard for me to make the transition. Also, the kids always laughed at me. I didn't speak the language, I wore tight clothes. I came from a place that everybody wore tight jeans and tight shirts. Everybody called me gay, I also had long hair. They would call me a girl. And obviously I didn't understand them at the time, but when everybody were laughing, I knew they were laughing at me. So ever since the age of six, I started to train Taekwondo. And I was very good at martial arts and I would always work out. I was always, I had a good build even as a six year old kid. And by the time I was 12, I was really nicely built, but it was different because fighting in Israel, 
and fighting in the United States is different. If I had a fight in the class in Israel, they would just put us aside and then talk to us. Well, it wasn't like that over here. I kicked a few kids in the stomach, kicked a kid in the head. I was about, I think I was like 10 and a half or 11. And then nobody talked to me anymore. But I, did get, I didn't get expelled, I got, I got taken out of school, you know, suspended for about a week. But when I came back, nobody ever laughed at me again. But when I spoke English at the age of 12, it was even harder for somebody to say something. You know, but I found out that uh, people really understand things better when they get a fist to their face. They just act different. So everybody started respecting me. And I continued with my martial arts skills. I went into all types of martial arts, from Kung Fu to Muay Thai, to kickboxing, to Krav Maga. And uh, I left Taekwondo, it wasn't for me because anytime I would spar and I'd kick somebody a little bit too hard, you know, I'd get in trouble. So, and I wanted to test my limits. But as I got older, you know, I went to different schools and I got kicked out of multiple schools because fighting was my go-to. If somebody talked bad about me or kids wanted to pick on me, I'd tell them, let's fight. If they laugh, they get punched in the face. And that kind of guided me to a great place in life because one, I was able to show how powerful I was. Two, I could take control over the room. And three, people then just stopped laughing at me. And then we became friends. And most of the guys that I fought with became my best friends because they wanted me to look after them. But I always fought the guys who were the bullies. In school, my friends were, I had a friend that was mentally challenged. I had two friends that were in a wheelchair. Uh, I had a friend that was a midget, you know, and I was protecting them. And at the age of 15, I dropped out of high school. There was no need for me to stay in high school. I went to Grant High School. We had a police station in the school. And one day there was five Mexican dudes trying to jump me in the bathroom. I beat the shit out of them. I left one of them with his head in the toilet. When I left school, the following day, I came back as I was leaving school. They came and they started shooting at me. So, you know, it started getting more violent. And, you know, if they can't beat you by hands, there was five of them. And uh, they had to use some other force, which was guns. So that was the last time I went back to school. I said, if I go back, I'm just gonna have to kill them. I don't wanna hurt anybody that bad. You know, it is what it is. It's time to get out of school. And I did, and at the time, I, my mother also got cancer, breast cancer, and it was a very tough time. And at the same time, my dad had a, his back broken and he had a surgery. He was on a wheelchair for about a year, had him to learn to walk again. So I just got my permit and I would drive him to work. And we'd go work between jobs, doing construction work. And uh, my dad was never a contractor before that. I mean, in Israel, he was a very well-known guy. He was a professional drummer. He played drums with some of the, the top guys in Israel, top singers. And it was very well-known coming here. You know, it's like you're out of your element. You don't know anybody. But it is what it is. That was uh, where we came to. And at no cause did he think that going back was ever going to be something that he was going to do. And I remember when we started construction together, we didn't even have a pickup truck. My dad had a little Honda Civic and we went to pick up a bunch of wood from Home Depot, like two by fours. Now they were too long and there was nowhere to put them and we couldn't tie them on the roof. So me and my dad broke the back window, took out the window so we could put the pipes and the two by fours in. And, you know, just hustling like that. And we'd go and do construction jobs and the inspector from the city would come and look at the job and goes, 
who's the idiot that did the plumbing here? And my dad goes, oh, we brought this contractor. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't think he was that good. Should we fire him? He goes, yeah, of course you should fire him. He's an idiot. <laughs> Next thing you know, the, the fucking, the inspector tells us exactly how to do the plumbing from A to Z. I write it down, my dad writes it down, and then we do it. We didn't get it perfect, so we bring the inspector again to do the inspection for the plumbing, and we go, what about this guy? He goes, and who's the fucking idiot you brought here? We're like, oh, it's another contractor. We fired the other idiot. This guy's a new guy. And <laughs> he goes, no, 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 no. The plumbing has to go here and here and here and here and here, and then it's gonna be good. And that's how we learned how to do construction, was by the city inspectors. But we went to companies and said we're contractors and we could do the job. And that's how we got into construction. You know, my dad is a, is a very smart guy, very well self-educated. As I tell people, I never let school get in the way of my education. And I, I, it doesn't matter what it is, I will educate myself. I will wake up in the morning if there's something I don't know how to do, but I need to do it, that, the end of that day, I will know how to do it. It doesn't matter what it is. And that's what a man should be doing. What's incredible is today that everybody's doing it. You know, the people who really want to succeed, men and women are doing it. They're doing the exact same thing. And I'm proud of these women out there that are doing it. Because you know what? A lot of the men stopped doing it. So for me, looking back and, and thinking about the stories that I had with my dad, and my dad was a very tough guy. I mean, I'd wake up in the morning, you know, with kicks to the head. My dad wasn't no martial artist, but I was sure a fucking punching bag from time to time. But I could tell you that that's what toughened me up because I'm also a tough soul. You can't really break me. You'd have to kill me. There's no way of breaking me. I'm not afraid of no man and I'm not afraid of anybody. I have only love in my heart and it's to one piece of this world and it's God. I'm not afraid of God either. I love God. Whenever he's going to take me, I will go gladly. There's nothing here in this world that I haven't done. I've had it all. And that's also why I'm here telling you guys all of this. This is why I'm doing this. It's because I've had it all. I've been all around the world. I've seen probably every beautiful spot in the world, every vacation, every woman. I've tasted every kind of food. I've driven every kind of car. There's nothing that impresses me anymore. Today, everything that I do is for you guys. I don't do it for anybody else because it really doesn't matter anymore. And I'm not looking for anybody to sit there and clap for me and say, great job, King Azula, you're the man. No, no, no. I'm looking for you guys to tell me, hey, King Azula, you helped me find the king inside of me, that king that I was looking for. Because each and every one of you could create your own kingdom. But, you know, going through life, the things that I've done, that's what made me the man that I am today. That's what made the king that I am today. I call myself a king because I find myself as a king. I treat myself as a king. And in that way, people treat me and respect me like a king. Maybe I don't wear a crown because we're not in monarchy time. But every man could be a king of your own kingdom. You build a beautiful house, you buy a place with a few acres, you're making great money, guess what? That's your kingdom. You don't have to wear a crown to be a king. You just have to be a real man. So at the age of 17, my dad told me I had to leave the house. You know, I, I like to argue a lot. I like to talk back. I was very, uh, very much of a smart ass. I'm a strong guy, but I'm also very smart. You know, I have a very high IQ, so for me to speak back and to be confrontational was something that was very easy for me to do, and it was like second nature to me. So at 17, he said, you know what? You gotta get the fuck out of here. And he kicked me out of the house, and I went homeless for a little bit. But he did the best thing he could have done for me, because as the person that I am, when I struggle and when I go through hard times, that's exactly when I grow, under pressure. I don't grow by sitting around. 
hanging out. I need pressure. That's why I run 16 businesses worldwide because I need the pressure. I need constantly. I, it's like I have a fire inside of me. And it's with that, I create something called an infinite intelligence where I'm able to delegate hundreds of people at the same time and I'm able to run multiple businesses at the same time while I keep myself in shape, I keep myself fit, I work on my body. So him kicking me out of the house was the best thing he could have ever done for me. Because once I got out, within three months, I found myself. And it's funny because I went into carpet cleaning. You know, I went and I started working as a carpet cleaner. I was cleaning Macy's and Bloomingdale at night times and at day times I would clean people's homes. And something that I did leave out and I'm not talking about is that I had family members that were big gangsters and I really wanted to be in that world because I was fighting and, you know, people were respecting me. I then went into the world of doing underground fights and doing underground fights was amazing for me because I fought people that were much older than me. I was 16 years old, but I was making about two to $3,000 a fight. I got my ass kicked one time in my life. I was 13 years old. I got jumped by about 30 guys outside of a house party. After that, I purchased an Uzi. Nobody ever jumped me again. Nobody ever said anything again. I was ready to die and I was ready to take everybody with me. That was my mentality. So I started doing underground fights at about the age of 15. The way it started, I was at a hookah bar and there was a group of guys and I used to look at people to see if they're looking at me. I, I thought everybody was against me. So I got into it with some of these guys and I ended up beating the fuck out of six of them. They were all older than me. A guy goes, pulls out a gun and tells me to stop. I look at him and I say, shoot me. That was the time my mom got cancer. I wanted to die. And he goes, I'm not going to shoot you. What's your name? And I said, what the fuck are you to ask me my name? I said, shoot me. He said, no, 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 no. I want you to be one of us. And we got in a conversation. And when he found out I was 15, he was shocked. I'm not going to mention his name, but we're talking somebody from the mob. And uh, I started doing underground fights for him. I also was his bodyguard for a while. And then uh, it was a time that I felt very powerful. But I try to step away from it and continue just doing construction with my dad after some time. And my dad didn't like the way my attitude was, so he kicked me out at 17. And I was on my own and, you know, being homeless for a little bit. And then after that, I found myself and started doing carpet cleaning. And then I went back to doing some fights because I needed the money. And after that, I, uh, I got arrested. And I got arrested for something that they said that I did and I didn't do it. And when I got out all clean after I spent a little bit of time in jail, I said, I'm never coming back here again. And then I met a young lady and I loved her very much. I spent two years with her. And pretty much the fact that I loved her so much made me go away completely from the places of let's get in trouble, let's fight with people, whoever says something, I'm gonna knock them the fuck out. I just wanted to make good money. So at the age of 19, I opened up my own business and I started doing air conditioning. And we did construction and you know, you enter the home with air conditioning and then you go into construction and then complete home remodels. And I was great at sales. I didn't even know how well I was gonna do communicating with people. 
People loved me because I was a genuine person. The only reason I used to fight so much is because my dad treated me like shit my whole childhood growing up. And I grew around a lot of tough people. So I thought maybe acting like them because everybody was against me, I felt. So I had to kind of like protect myself. But at some point I got out of control. When I managed to start controlling the person that I was, I started to make money. And within very quick time, I mean, once I started making five grand a month, which was at the time that I was 18, and then at 19, I was already making like 30K a month. By the time I was 20, I was making 50K a month. And it just went on and on and on and on. And at the age of 24, I retired because I've done all the investments I needed just to sit around, enjoy life, go travel the world. And for eight years, that's what I've been doing. And when I say I've seen it all, I've seen it all. There's nothing that could impress me. I don't care if you have a Bugatti, you have a private jet, you have a yacht. I've seen it all. I don't care for it. I care for people now. I care for a very long time about people. And what I do for many years now is coach people help guys not to go through the things that I went through. You could be a strong man. You could be a tough guy. You could be an alpha, but you got to do it right. It seems like we're lacking on alphas nowadays. I think it's time to bring back the old generation. You know, growing up, I mean, the movies that I grew up on was like Jean-Claude Van Damme. That was my dream to be the next Jean-Claude Van Damme. Before him, it was Bruce Lee. Then we had Steven Seagal, we had Arnold, we had Sylvester Stallone, we had Jet Li, Jackie Chan. These guys were real. Then all of a sudden you have people playing these superheroes and they're a bunch of dorks and skinny kids. And I mean, it's nice that they get a part in, in a movie. I respect that, but they're not really giving some sort of a, a real role model to the kids of nowadays. That's why kids nowadays are just sitting with an iPad. Their attention span is completely terrible. They see you, they don't shake your hand. I'm like, you're 21 years old. How do you not shake a man's hand when you meet him? They go, hi. They're hiding behind their parents. They're living at home. And you could tell that they're going to live at home probably till they're 40. You know, it's like, that's what it's going to be. Like, they, those kids are going to be 35 and go, shh, my roommates are sleeping, be quiet. You know, to their girlfriend, and it's actually his parents or his grandma. I think it's time for men to become men again. And men are complaining about women being masculine. I don't care how powerful a woman gets or how strong she gets. She cannot emasculate me. There's no way. Which means if you were the strongest man that you could possibly be, there is no woman that will emasculate you. The only reason she emasculates you is because she's more masculine than you'll ever be because you're not masculine. You're not a real man. That's the truth. But if you are a real man, you'd have no problem with a woman being educated, with a woman working, with a woman being the top CEO. That's only low value, low quality men that goes, oh, these women are masculine. Well, become a man again. And I promise you, they will let go of that masculinity because she doesn't want to be masculine. She wants to be a lady. But nowadays, you know, I live in LA and the women, they lift weights the way the men lift weights. They train their bodies. They look like like a kind of like very masculine, like a dude, you know, no breast at all, only legs, big butt. And that's what they train. And they look stronger than the men. They shake hands more firm than a man. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. But did they need to get like that because men were not being men? I sure do believe so. Because back in the day, men were men. So the woman didn't need to do anything. 
Also, men, when they wanted a woman, they like went to her father and said, hey, I'd like to ask for your daughter's hand. And they promised to stay with the woman and they gave her the world. And now you men just want to have fun and, you know, take some girl's virginity and be done with her within a week. If I found a woman that's a virgin, I'm going to marry her before even sleeping with her. My problem is that there was too many idiot men out there that played too many women and these women they just want to find love they're being hopelessly romantic because a woman wants love she doesn't need sex so the fact that she's given herself to you and then you think about it and you have like post nut syndrome and you're like oh my god i don't want this woman anymore because i already had it like one thing i could tell women nowadays if you want a man even if you're 20 years old go with a man that's in his early to mid thirties because he knows what he wants. And when you get with him, you make sure you do not sleep with the man. If you've already slept around, forget about it. But if you're somebody that's a virgin or been with one or two guys, you don't add up those numbers because we look at those things. We want a woman to be as pure as possible and away from these corrupted things. Because the more boyfriends she has, the more trauma she has. Because men will traumatize a woman by making her believe that they're in love or whatever it is. And then leaving her or ghosting her. And that's something that I don't like about men nowadays. Because I will be upfront If I meet you and you're a cool girl, I'll tell you, hey, let's have fun. If I'm not looking to get married. If I want to marry you, I'll tell you I want to marry you. I've been dying to get married for years. I just can't find the right woman. Because how am I going to marry somebody who's already been with so many people? It's not in my nature and it's not in my culture. I, I, and I'm Israeli. I went to Israel to look for a woman. And it's like that all over the world now. You meet a girl. She's 20 years old. She's been with 20 men. What? Where? How? If you look at every religion out there, if you're Catholic, you're supposed to wait till marriage until you actually give it to the men. If you're Christian, you're supposed to wait till marriage. If you're Muslim, you're supposed to wait till marriage. If you're Jewish, you're supposed to wait till marriage. Every religion says that the woman needs to stay pure and as pure as possible. And also as men, we need to keep ourselves as pure as possible. But we're able to take more shit and go through more problems and not be as affected or traumatized or hurt in a way that it will change the way we are later on in life. A woman does. When I meet a woman and she's 30 years old, you know, almost my age, and she's been with 10 ex-boyfriends, I sit there at first dinner and all I hear is about her ex-boyfriends. And that's something very difficult because that guy did this and the other guy did that and that guy did this and that guy only liked that. It's like, do I really want to sit there and hear about the past 15 years of your relationships and you're comparing them to me when you just met me? Why do I need to be affected by whatever happened to you in the past? I'm somebody new. Oh, but now she doesn't trust. Now, words don't mean anything to her. She only goes by actions. That's something that, personally, I don't want to deal with. And I will not deal with. If you're with me, you're with me. I don't want to hear about anybody else. So, if you're a woman, I'm telling you. Take your time when you meet a man. Make sure he's a real man. Before jumping into all these things with him. So, the first time I came out... And the reason I came out was because I was watching how they were banning and censoring other influencers and also the President of the United States. When I saw them ban someone like Donald Trump, your president, how do you ban your president from social media? I want to see you do that in another country. I want to see you do it in China. I want to see you do it in Russia. You know, there's no order here. Everything is corrupted. Then they went and they, in COVID time, censored Harvard University 
doctors who were trying to help the people and they censored them. Then they started censoring Jordan Peterson for fighting for the kids and making sure that these poor kids do not have a sex change before they know who they truly are. And then they arrested the Tate brothers. Look, maybe the Tate brothers, Andrew, didn't say something that people would like. He also did a lot of things, so he will go viral, say things that are controversial, say things that are dumb, but he's actually a very smart person. And I respect him a lot, and I like him a lot. And after that, I had to come out and put this time and effort to explain to the people that no matter what, there should be freedom of speech. And he didn't do anything wrong for him to be arrested. In the United States, it says, until proven in the court of law, you are not guilty. They did not prove anything. Do you think someone at his level needs to have any kind of connection to sex trafficking? You guys don't understand. That guy was a nerd and went from a nerd to being a four-time world champion in kickboxing. He defeated all the odds. He's an incredible man. He's very well-spoken. And that's the kind of guy and the kind of man that a lot of people should look up to. And again, he said some things that, of course, were not right. But he said it so he could create a lot of noise. You guys not watch Conor McGregor before the fight with Mayweather? How much shit he talked? That's what makes noise. Noise makes fame and fame makes money. But they shouldn't be in jail. They should be released right away. This is against all human rights. They should not be in there. So that was the reason I wanted to come out. And we'll see if I'm going to be next. So far, it looks like they're shadow banning me from some platforms because of the things that I say. And let's see what's going to happen next. But I decided I was going to come out and speak for the people. And I support the Tate brothers 110%. And I'm with them all the way. And I will become influential enough that the whole world will listen to me and understand that these boys had nothing to do with what they're accusing them of doing. And let me tell you exactly the reason why they arrested them. When Tate said that he was coming out with his own bank, I knew that they were going to get arrested. Do you think that the elites would let somebody at his level as influential as he is, come out and open his own bank. You know, people at Tate's level usually don't speak. They run away from people. The problem is, is that he's very, very confrontational. He likes the noise. Why? Because he's what you call new money. New money needs to announce itself which is completely fine. He did it all on his own. But when he said he was going to open up a bank, I saw it coming. Because there's no way the elites would let somebody like that take over the banks in the world. And by opening up his own bank, and so many people trust him, especially the young people, that would have caused them one fucking mass destruction. And I saw it coming. And that's why I'm out now, because I need the world to see and to understand that it's time to truly have freedom and never let anybody control you.